Let's go. Out on the video chat, it's been far too long since Mike Abu Meshrick joined us. He's wearing the same jacket, however, and he's got a visor on. How you doing, Abu? I'm doing great. I got my Rod Peterson Tampa Bay trip uh, souvenir hat on. I had to change it up today. I've been wearing the same thing for two months. If I had this known... Is the week of changes, baby. If I had known you were going to wear your visor, I'd have worn mine because I have the exact same one on the exact same trip. So can you update us, please, on your life since the last time you were on? Um, as you and Luke Molander pointed out, I've been practicing the social distancing thing for years. I'm, I'm thriving in it. You know, you don't get to see people. Uh, you got to stay home and do everything on the, on the interweb. I mean, it's fantastic. It's great. Uh, I've got no complaints, frankly, 74 days in, but you must have some thoughts on the way where the CFL sits right now. Cause let's be honest, a few things have happened in the last two months since we've had you on with the CFL, your former league. Let's go. The last two weeks, things have happened. Uh, the, the, the weeks before that, not much. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know how the CFL is going to, um, um, gonna progress i i think things uh just in general will progress a lot will progress a lot um in, in september but cfl is a great gate driven uh, revenue stream the the, the revenues are, are are driven through great and um i i don't see them putting thirty thousand people in anywhere ten thousand people in anywhere as for hub cities and stuff like that it, as a i understand everyone wants to play play football and, and and basketball and they just want to get back to something but as 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 a, as a player you sign on the dotted line to go and play in a city and you bring your family there and you and 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 um I forget. I forget who it was. There's a guy with a with a three month old baby, and he's like, "There's no way that I'm gonna go away for the next four months and miss my family for this." Um, there's things that you negotiate in your contract. Maybe you take more money to stay somewhere, or take less money to stay somewhere else. And um, to just assume that the players are gonna drop everything and go to a hub city um, and miss their I don't know. Let's go out onto the chat line and see who would leave their three-month-old baby to go and play a game. But no matter what their job is, there's things that you can't put a price tag on. And I think there's a lot of assumption going on um, in in everything except baseball. I I can't believe some of these greedy owners. Usually I'm on the side of owners, but... Uh, um, there's a lot of assumptions being made that the players are just going to drop everything and move to whatever city, or even if the even if Regina was a hub city, you got to leave your family anyways and go and live in a hotel for, for for who who knows. As someone who played ten years in the league and always based their contract not on money but on family and where you could be, could you be around your family or how much are they going to pay you to be away from your family? Um, you couldn't negotiate that into my contract. They didn't. Well, let me ask you this. So that's what I think. Are you speaking just on a CFL angle or when we get into the NFL, NBA, MLB, and we're talking millions, would it be more attractive for those guys to go when millions are on the line versus the CFL? Because let's be honest, we know a lot of guys in the CFL that have left their families for six months for not a lot of money. You know, <laughs> but but you, you, you agree to. I mean, there's... Right. I mean, I mean, there's lots of things that I would do. I mean, there's nothing that I wouldn't do for a job, and I've proven that. But, I mean, the worse the job is, the more you got to get paid. I mean, that might be, you know, you know, digging a hole. But, I mean, I'll dig a hole, but I won't leave my family. you got to pay me a lot more to leave my family than, than to dig a hole. And, 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 and to be honest, you know what? It, it, I wasn't really going to Major League Baseball. I was thinking NBA. Um because that's where it is. That's where they're saying, oh, well, there's fewer players. We can get going sooner. Uh, it's just very uh, assumptive to think this, that uh, that a player will get up and leave and, and, and get going uh, for six months, for three months, for two months, for one month. You got kids. How much does a three-month-old change in a month? If your wife's pregnant, you're going to miss that. If you're, you know, uh, There's some things that, 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 that players – plan into their contract that that's not being assumed i do like 
any extended amount of time away from your family is is it's not not negotiable but it's assumptive to assume well if that's, uh, our, uh, if that our makes friend sense. Our friend Don in Ottawa is watching, and uh, he goes, he's with, ha, was with HMCS Queen Regina Naval Ship. Uh, he is with the Navy. He goes, I left my six-month-old daughter. What do you say? My newborn daughter for six months, but I'm in the Navy. And frankly, I am of that mindset of do what it takes, but I know you are too, Abu. I think it's a case-by-case-by-case case case scenario. Some guys will do it. Some guys won't, which you already basically just said. But I, you sign your contract, and you have a choice to be in the Navy or not be in the Navy, right? Yep. Like once I'm you, sure the, Don the was Navy's making different. I mean, I'm sure Don was making millions in the Navy too. Let's not forget. It's not about money, man. That, that's what that's what I'm saying. It's not about <laughs> money, and you could put whatever price tag you want on it. What what like the million dollar man Ted DiBiase said? Everybody's got a price, and uh, some people's prices are higher. Some people uh, are lower. I'm not making uh, commentary. Like, um, um, different people are in this, different situations. Um, I, I do like the tournament, the, the short spurts tournament come here. Uh, say a team comes here for t- three teams come here for two weeks. Those teams play each other uh, over, over those two. We get two games in two weeks, and then you go back to the next city. I could see something like that. But at the same time, not even in the CFL because – it's very much gate driven. The, the revenue is gate driven. So, I mean, if you can't get fans in there, I don't see how the CFL is going to make it work. Yeah. Well, interesting. Sean in Saskatoon's watching. He says, wouldn't be the first dads to work away from the family to make ends meet. Uh, again, everybody's got an opinion on this. There are NBA players that considered going to play in the Chinese basketball league just to get a paycheck because LeBron said he wouldn't do it. And those players said, well, LeBron, we're not all, all making $32 million a year like you. We do need to work. You know, uh, obviously you have some thoughts yeah, on that. I mean, that, I mean, it, it goes down to choice. I mean, there's people that dig holes for a living. I mean, there's people that pick cotton for a living. But if you're told that you have to pick cotton, that's a whole different story. And that's why I don't agree with it. I, I don't I'm, I, I'm on the player side as far as you're signing. A, as soon as you sign, I'm on the player side. As soon as you sign your contract to do that job, that is your job. I signed to play in Saskatchewan, you know. I, so the job was here. I brought my family here. Um, if they all of a sudden said, oh, you know what? Saskatchewan's closed, Mike. We're going to Vancouver. Uh, I'd be like, well, that contract's got to be null and void. If there's, and certainly it's got to be null and void because that's not what I signed up for. It's right there in the agreement, Saskatchewan <laughs> Rough Riders, you know. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, that's just me causing, causing, causing a ruckus. Uh, I just heard, heard, heard uh, Drager saying that... Uh, uh, it would be up to the players to decide whether they wanted to go back. That's a new piece of information that I didn't know until he uh, he mentioned it to me, and uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. You're being, as they say, a locker room lawyer, which they, is really loved in the front offices of teams. <laughs> what are you shaking your head No, like? well, you know why I'm doing that is because you, when you get burned enough, you just want to know what the rules you play with. The rules aren't in the handbook saying, you know, there's holding and there's this. There's... Oh, you have to jump through hoops. You know, would be a good person to talk about that. Adrian Obelli. He, he, you know, he made up this kissing bandit thing, so people would be afraid to cut him because he got cut so many times in the NFL. He's like, all right. You know, it, 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 there, there's a lot of other things. There's he's a lot like of Klinger. That, that he's the like head office play with that you got to know that are there. He's like Klinger and Mash. Can't cut him by reason of insanity. Basically, is what you're saying. Now, well, yeah, smart. That's not so, where we're going, but. Same like I mentality. Said, I've been here for two months. Yeah, exactly. Hey, so I got to ask you this. Uh, Randy Ambrosi was basically with us an hour ago. I don't know if you saw it or not, but he said, uh, We may play, we may not this year, but when we come back, you know, we're looking at the business model. They're calling it CFL 3.0. Here's my question to you. You're a wonderful guy to ask because you're from downtown Toronto. You played university in London and you've played pro in Ottawa, Winnipeg, and Saskatchewan, not to mention road cities all across the country. Is there enough love yes. in this? Is there enough love in this country to save the CFL when the time comes? That's why I said to the commissioner, "What can we do to help this league as CFL lovers?" And he basically said, "Stay you know tuned." What? I, I, and I'm going to say this about the CFL in particular, but it can go across the board. This whole uh, COVID has a, ha, is like a global national reset on everything. You know, uh, people are now understanding what uh, working together is. It's not always about you know. Um, 
It's about getting forward and making it through. And that's that's what happens in the CFL. It, it, it's an opportunity for um, for every business in the CFL and, and outside to look at themselves to see if they are a viable business in this new market going forward. Every business has to do it. CFL is no different because everything has changed. How so? I don't know. 60,000, I'm so glad, I'm not, I'm not very happy that we have a 60,000 seat stadium down the road that'll never be used again, you know. Um, I know it's not 60, but um, it, it's just a reset for everywhere and, and no one really knows where uh, um, where that's going to go. But And I think that's, a, so I think that's a good thing for the CFL, you know, especially out in the Maritimes where um, they haven't really built their, their stadium yet. And maybe they can spread out the seats. Maybe there's the a smaller venue. Maybe maybe one side is just a field again. Maybe we go back to the 50s style and, hey, man, I don't know, I'm not... I'm not as old as my my Santa Claus beard might tell, but that might not be a bad thing, you know. What's wrong with having one person stay at home, you know, or two people stay at home, you know? What's wrong with slowing down a little bit, uh, um, you know, having a having an uh, having an end zone where the kids can buy a you know a ticket for two bucks? Well, you know, now what, I'm about... starting to sound like Polly and Aldag back when <laughs> I was a kid. Well, but, you're. Uh, you're you're getting into that realm, but let me say this: this may or, this may or may not ha- be hard to believe, but I'll say this. I mean, one thing: when things break, they usually come back stronger. It's hard to believe as we oh. sit here today that we could all come back stronger, but that's probably what's going to happen, and that could be the same case for the Canadian Football League. Uh, to be honest with you, so do you feel like we're getting closer? Calendar-wise, we are clearly we're going to play again. It's just a matter of when, but it's like. Now we're getting a plan to play. Pretty soon it's going to be in the players' hands. Do you want to do it? Do you feel like we're inching, we're making some progress here? Yeah, we. I mean, two weeks ago, we, we had no idea. You know, now that market, that, that market reset is, is, is going to be there. We kind of understand that we're, they're not going to be playing in front of sellout crowds, right? Um, and, you know, there's there's other professional leagues around the world. The Bundesliga, uh, you know, I'm big soccer. And this doesn't count as my one time a year that I get to talk about soccer on your show, Rod. It does not. Um, the Bundesliga started up a couple of weeks ago. And that first week without fans, without that uh, buildup of emotion, I got to see why people really don't like watching soccer. Because it's kind of not really a lot happens. Um, when the crowd, and baseball is like this too. When the crowd starts talking, when you see the crowd? You know, when the crowd starts erupting, you watch and your attention gets so, get, gets that much more um, pinpoint and you get to watch a little bit. And I found myself missing goals, missing like great plays just because uh, um, that excitement wasn't there. Uh, in week two, you can hear them. They pumped in some noise. They pumped in some crowd noise. I mean, it's not overwhelming, but at least it's something to for the viewer. And uh, I don't know if you guys talked about it already, but the NFL is talking about uh, – Pumping in crowd noise and um, having some uh, digital uh, crowds uh, for for when we're watching on TV, just to make it not look like a practice, because it's kind of uh, kind of kind of kind of boring watching really exciting athletic feats. I don't what are know. your thoughts? I, I actually think I've been envisioning this. I don't mind because I'm very entrenched on what's going on. UFC. They've been had four cards now without crowds, and I haven't noticed a difference. You're no different, man. You are entrenched in what's going on on the field or the ice. I mean, I, it's not going to, I don't think, affect me. I swear, but that's well, just me. Well, I'm talking me. more as a fan. As, as a fan. As, as a fan of soccer. I mean, golf yeah. yesterday. They said it to, look at those. Did you watch the match yesterday? I knew it was on, and I just, ugh. there was paint that was drying, drying in the other room, and I thought, hey, I should go watch that. It's going to be different so opinions. For, I get it for every single guy, but uh, yeah, it's a different strokes for different folks. How about that? It was really nice not to watch it. You know what I mean? Like at my to house, the choice. Side, so I guess it was on the TV, but at my house on the, on Sundays, ever since I was a kid and when I was a kid, it was horse racing, but uh, there's always been sports on, you know, uh, no matter what it is, wild world of sports or whatever. I know I'm, uh, they should bring that man. That'd be fantastic. Um, but so it was nice to have that on that roar of a sports uh, uh, event. Just like I'm talking about with with soccer, I guess it's that in golf. When someone gets a good tee shot, you hear the roar, and I guess that uh, the sound of sports is kind of like the uh, the um, soundtrack LP of our lives. Of my life soundtrack yeah. of our lives. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, Abu, we should run. This has been fantastic. Let's not wait two months until we do it again. Yeah, no, let's do it again. 
Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks, Abu. Great jacket. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Blowing kisses as he goes. Guy should have been a pro wrestler. There's no doubt. Oh, yeah. Lots of comments coming in. Wayne and Victoria says, we need people to be more positive like you are, Rod. When times get tough, you need positivity because it's so easy to be negative. Oh, trust me. I try to read the news or watch the news, and it's so depressing. I'm like, that's why I don't read the news. It's not changing my life, frankly, whether I read it or I don't. Exactly. So, anyways, lots to get to. Rob Vanstone coming up. We'll be right back. It's the Rod Peterson Show. Episode 240 today of Canada's Morning Sports Talk Show. We'll be right back. Facebook Live, Game Plus TV Network, and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.